So you're looking to visit Indonesia, then this is the only guide you will need to plan your next trip. I've lived here for over two years, and whether you're staying here for 30 days or over a year, this guide will cover everything you need to know. Indonesia has become one of my favorite countries to travel, as you can see from the 60 plus videos I've filmed in this country. By the end, you'll know everything from the best places to travel, best time to exchange money, and things you didn't even think you needed to know. But if there is something more specific you're interested in knowing, make sure you hover your mouse over this video to see the video chapters down below. Now, before coming to Indonesia, there will be three things you will need to consider, and that is going to be your visa, your insurance, and the quarantine. Now, I don't wanna to get too much into the regulations because by the time I finish filming this video, it will probably change. But as of now, in November 2021, there are many nationalities that can come to Indonesia on a business visa or if you have a residency permit. If you're interested to know the visa agency I've been using, you can message me directly on Instagram and I will send you the contact information for the visa agency that I use here. The second thing you will need is insurance. And the company that I've been using is called Safety Wing. I've been using them for over a year now and you can get insurance from them for as low as $40 a month and coverage is worldwide, which is amazing. And another incredible feature that they have is a visa confirmation letter. So when you enter a different country, some of them will require to show proof that you have coverage for COVID and that lists exactly the countries you're visiting, which is amazing. Uh, I will have a link in the description for you guys for those of you interested in checking them out. But the third thing is the quarantine. Uh, I have done a quarantine video here in Indonesia, uh, but again, I don't wanna get too far into it because again, it changes so frequently here. At this time, you only need to do a three-day quarantine, which is actually pretty affordable. I imagine now you can get it for three million to four million uh, for the entire quarantine package. And the only requirement for quarantine is that you need to be fully vaccinated. If you have one dose, however, they will require you to quarantine for five days. Now, let's get into the best time to travel to Indonesia. There's two seasons you guys need to be aware of. That is dry season and wet season. So wet season is typically from October to roughly about March is when it ends. And the dry season is going to be from March until about October. Uh, so you want to definitely plan on being here in the dry season because typically in the wet season, you're gonna have a rain pretty much every single day during the afternoons. Where is the best place to start for your travels in Indonesia? There's two options I have for you. That is Jakarta or Bali. If you plan on coming into Jakarta, definitely spend a few days here. It's a very underrated city. It's a big metropolis area and there is so much to do here. Now the second option is going to be Bali. If you're looking for the tropical island life, that is going to be the better option for you. In the surrounding area, you have Lombok, Nusa Penida, the Gili Islands, Lembongan, but Bali is going to be the much more tourist friendly area if this is your first time to Indonesia or even first time to Asia. It's gonna be much less of a culture shock to you guys and much less of a language barrier in fact as well because everybody on the island pretty much speaks English. Now, how do you get across the country? This is probably one of the easiest parts because there's just so many options from affordable travel to even a luxury travel around Indonesia. You have everything from buses, trains, public transportation, taxis, and even motorbikes. So the options are pretty much limitless on how you want to do it. It's just a matter of what your itinerary is. One of the first ways of traveling from city to city is using the bus system. You can get tickets as low as 100K IDR all the way up to 400, 500K IDR for the luxury options. We took a trip from Jakarta to Surabaya on a sleeper bus with Sinarjaya buses. It's one of the top tier buses here in the country and that cost us only $25 US. So again, incredibly affordable, but it might take you a little bit longer with traffic. Another option is using the train system. There's a massive train network around the country. To give you an example, we went on the economy train and you can get tickets for as low as 90K IDR one way. And if you're looking to go one of the more expensive routes, uh, you can book a luxury first class ticket from Jakarta to Surabaya for roughly about 800 to 900K IDR and that'll give you a first class seat as well as a meal on board the train. 
If, is it worth it? I, I'll let you decide and go and view that video. But there are so many more options for transportation to get around the country. Uh, I've made a full video on the public transportation system here in Jakarta specifically. Um, you can view that video with, by clicking above. But if you're looking for more independence, I highly recommend you guys rent a motorbike. It's a lot more difficult to do in Jakarta, but if you're visiting cities like Surabaya, Yogyakarta, even Bali, it is very, very easy. We visited islands like Lombok, Lembongan, Bali, and we all got motorbikes for roughly about 50 to 70k IDR per day. Surabaya was definitely by far the hardest places to rent a bike because you needed uh, like three or four forms of ID. Uh, usually it's not that difficult though. Typically they only ask for a copy of your passport and on your way you go. You don't even really need an international license. However, um, I would highly recommend you get one before you come into the country. Most places will not ask for it when you're renting it, but there is a chance you will get pulled over by police here and they will ask for it. If you don't have that, then you're gonna be paying a pretty hefty fine. Now let's quickly talk about phone plans and data here in the country. This will be very quick. The best one to use is called Telcom Cell. It is the only one I would actually recommend. Uh, you can get them anywhere in the malls and you can get a SIM card for as cheap as like 200K IDR. And it's very, very easy to top up. You just visit an Indomart or an Alpha Mart store. You can just say Pulsa Telcom Cell and you can just tell them how much you wanna put on the SIM card and they will top it up and then you just use your app to preload the packages that you wanna purchase. One additional cost you may need to consider when you're renting a motorbike is parking fees and security fees. Whenever you're visiting any convenience stores, there's typically a parking attendant, and if you're using a motorbike, you will need to pay the attendant roughly about 2K IDR. If you're parking a car, then you're gonna wanna pay them at least like 5K IDR to 10K IDR. Indonesia is one of those places where you can find any types of accommodations from luxury villas in Bali to local accommodations in rural cities, and of course your high-rise apartments here in Jakarta, Indonesia. Whatever you're looking for though, you will find something within your budget. The best ways of booking accommodations that I found living here is using either booking.com, Airbnb, or Facebook groups. If you're looking for hotels or something that is just very last minute, I would definitely recommend booking.com over Airbnb. Everything is just very conveniently laid out for you including the final price of the bill that you're going to expect there's no hidden fees no security deposits or anything of that nature the upside of booking a hotel is that most of the international chains will have uh, international wall outlets but places like villas and local residents and apartments will not and you will need to use a converter depending on what kind of plug you have for electricity. If you're looking for something a little bit more down the road or even those luxury or unique experiences, I would definitely recommend Airbnb as the better option for you. Although they tend to book up much quicker than booking.com, I think you're gonna be much more happy with the accommodations and the variety of accommodations on Airbnb. If you're looking for something a little bit more long-term, there are many Facebook groups for listings and real estate. Living in Bali, I found all of my long-term monthly accommodations for a conveniently low price through Facebook groups. So if you're looking for something monthly or yearly, in fact, then use the Facebook groups. You can negotiate a much better deal than on Airbnb or booking.com. Using apps in Indonesia, there's only six apps that I've used every single day. The first of which is Google Translate. There is a bit of a language barrier depending on what area of Indonesia you're traveling to. Of course, the local islands and places like Jakarta, there's gonna be very limited English unless you're in the very metropolis expat hub of that area. But you should definitely learn some key phrases phrases like hello, goodbye, thank you, what is that, and how much, of course. The second app, of course, as I mentioned, Facebook, because Facebook groups are a huge, huge thing here. It is the best way of finding accommodations. The third app I use every day is going to be Gojek. You can use it for booking food, delivery, and booking rides. So if you're not interested in using a taxi, you can book a Gojek motorbike or even a Gojek car to get to your destination. Fourth one is called Wise, and this has been a very extremely helpful app. Very similar to PayPal or Venmo, even from uh, if you're from the United States, 
you can easily transfer money directly from your local account in the United States or wherever you're from and directly transfer it to Indonesian bank accounts here in the country. I will have a link in the description for you guys if you guys want to check out that app. And then the last two are actually essential for here in Indonesia. The first one is called Pel Pedulingo. Pedulingi, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but you need it to enter the country is the main thing. Uh, you cannot get into any malls, any shopping centers, um, any buildings really unless you use that uh, app. It is basically an app to use as a QR code and a tracking app to track all your whereabouts because of the whole pandemic situation currently in the country. And the final one is called Traveloco. It is the best way to find hotels, buses, train tickets, uh, flights really around the country and it accepts all the major credit cards. So it's very convenient and very foreigner friendly to use here for booking things in Asia. Now for purchasing things here in Indonesia, there's two ways you can go about it. The first is with your credit card of course, but some local restaurants and some local places don't accept credit cards. And of course, as you heard, cash is king. So whenever you're coming to Indonesia, definitely have some cash on hand because you're gonna need it for things like tipping, security, parking, everything in between. Now you can bring cash in your local currency into the country and use a currency exchange to exchange your money into Indonesian rupiah. There's two tips I have for you. Do not use currency exchanges that are not reputable, meaning that they are literally a box with tinted windows. Uh, do not use those because you will probably get scammed for your money there. The second tip I have for you is to exchange your money between 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. local time because that is when the exchange rate is at its highest. If you're looking to exchange your money, the two reputable companies I recommend is BMC and Central Kuta if you're in Bali. If you're in Jakarta, uh, you can definitely go into any of the malls and get your currency exchange there. Now, if you're using your debit card, there's many ATMs ATMs around the cities, but of course you're gonna be charged ATM fees and foreign exchange rates So I would definitely try to stay away from the ATMs as much as possible coming to Indonesia You must definitely try the local cuisine here now If you've done any research on the country then you probably are familiar with nasi goreng and mi goreng But you should definitely step out of your comfort zone now if you're eating street food for the very first time in Asia then you should definitely start off slow. Some of my favorite dishes have been soto betawi, martabak, curry ayam, and ikan bakar. If you're definitely a bit on the cautious side, my recommendation to you is go to the local spots where there is the most locals. Typically, if there's a lot of locals coming back, then they're definitely not getting food poisoning there. As far as entertainment goes, it really just depends on what you're looking for. In places like Bali and the surrounding islands, you definitely have a lot of island hopping, a lot of outdoors and adventure activities, go into waterfalls, go into the beaches, beach clubs, rooftop bars. If you're coming to places like Jakarta and the big cities, your entertainment's really going to be going to shopping malls, exploring the streets, and even going to indoor experiences like ice skating in the mall, going to go-karts, and even jet skis around Jakarta. Now, if you're looking to get anything shipped here, the two companies I would recommend would be DHL and the local company is called JNE, and you can get something shipped anywhere really across Indonesia, around 50K IDR to 100K IDR, so it's not too expensive. As for shopping online, the two biggest companies are going to be Tokopedia for anything electronics and everything else is going to be on Lazada. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> for the two years that I have lived here, I've never had to go in for anything really too serious, except for a dental treatment. A few months ago, I had to go in for a root canal in Bali, and my experience was actually pretty pleasant. I had to pay about five to six million IDR for an entire root canal treatment. I'm not really too sure how much it would compare to the prices in your com home country, but overall, the dentist was very good and she spoke really good English. As for the pharmacies, one of the biggest pharmacy stores here in the country is going to be Guardian. So if you're looking for anything cosmetics, pharmacy, Guardian is going to be the place to go. And the very last thing I wanted to cover for you guys is the living costs in Indonesia. As you know, I've been living here for over two years and I've done two cost of living videos and to give you guys an idea of the metropolitan side in Jakarta and the tropical island life in Bali. So if you guys want to see those two videos, you can click the link above and that'll give you guys an idea of everything from food costs, groceries, laundry, data costs per month 
here, living here in Indonesia. But if you've been to Indonesia before and you want to share any other recommendations with fellow travelers, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you guys like this video, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.